I don't think I'm a, a composer that wants to be heard, that really wants to come and hit you. That's just not my nature. Sometimes it might serve me more if it was in, in certain environments. Am I, am I too shy in, in my expressive sensibility? And I should be more open and like pushing forward. But I think my, my basic aesthetic is one of, of, of more subtlety. Oh my gosh, I love <laughs> Elemental so much and the music is amazing. It's oh, so you. good. <laughs> uh, can you talk to me about kind of the inspirations of what you look to when composing for this movie? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Whenever I think about inspirations, the, the process for me is so fluid that I, half the time I can't remember when I wrote something or how it came about other than I spent a lot of time recording. I mean, one-on-one -on -one with a lot of players that I've worked with for, you know, many, many decades, many, many decades, a couple of decades or whatever. Um, and, you know, along the way, I'll, I'll, just to start off, I'll just put image up and, and uh, the image will be shared with a player I'm working with and we'll try something and see what works, uh, add something else, see if that works, uh, get idea after idea after idea, put these ideas in many places in the movie, say, I like it here, don't like it there, you know, very, very casually uh, rot to begin with. And then at a certain moment, invite uh, Pete Sohn, the director down to, to just see what, you, what he thinks. Um, and as I say, it's just it's tough to remember how it comes about because it's 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 very non-intellectual, um, and because it, when when I when I think things through, I, I tend to be the the worst. When I, when I'm not thinking, I tend to be you know kind of the best. I totally get that. Um, and then what were when you were because Elemental Element City is so cool because it has the influences of like earth, air, water, fire. How did you like create kind of the themes for each of those elements and then merge them to fit the city as a whole? The more I tried to think, just to go back to the thinking aspect of this, the the the, the more daunting it was. I mean, what what is what is you know, if, if, is there a musical culture for fire, for water, for 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 air and vapor and earth? So I think I kind of threw all that out. That this notion of okay, you know, this is going to be this, this is going to be that, and just started kind of going to work, as I say, have, having players over, trying to pluck certain things, bonk certain other things, uh, you know, sample uh, phrase rhythms um, uh, in drums and, and, and vocal chatters and, and put them in these places and said, I buy this. When I hear it, I buy it, but not with a lot of um, uh, intellectual pretext. And then can you talk to me a little bit about kind of the evolution of Wade and Ember's themes? Because they're very, very different. And then we have that romance story that kind of brings them together. That's another thing I think, geez, what did I do? <laughs> just got to think about certain. Uh, I mean, I think in the case of Ember, um, it was there, there was something um, that was always going to be emotive as it related to her sense of obligation to family and to, the, to this idea of having to take over the shop uh, and something innately not sad in her, but resigned. There was a certain resignation in what she had to be. This notion, too, that when she you know, fixed a glass of uh, uh, counter or when she uh, you know put a bowl back together that it was it was nothing that she she did that very very uh, intuitively too um to the point of thinking it was nothing all she says is oh there's a spill on aisle 4 uh and i and i so the, so there was a, a bit of a motif in in an octave mandolin that that served that in terms of wade um i don't know that there was so much a theme for wade uh as as there were colors uh you know um the vibraphones um, struck metals and things like that. I, I'm not answering your question well because I swear I don't I, I don't think this way where here's my theme and I use it here and there and this and that. It was like, here's an idea. I really like it. Oh, could it work here? And and then I I, I, I circle back and I, I don't remember as well as I should what it was that got me to the places I, I got to. And I, and I and I do like that. I do like that that it's it's you know I try to leapfrog the the overly thoughtful composer in me. No, I think that's really interesting. Like you you just said that um, there were colors for Wade. How does that work for you? Just by putting up colors and 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 and, and looking at at a scene with Wade and saying, do I buy this? Does do my ears buy what my eyes are seeing? Do do they do they meld together? Uh, and then ultimately asking myself why. Now that's slightly intellectual, and but saying if it works here. Could it work there? Very practical minded, you know, which I, I think is is really important. I mean, I want to be highly creative and poetical, but I want to put it in a practical aspect so that I can continue to make progress uh, just because it's a daunting amount of, you know, 80 minutes of 
90 minutes of, of uh, music or something. Um, but as I say, pretty non-intellectual. That may be a cheat of an answer, but that's as a good an answer as I can give you. And then you've done a lot of, you've done both animation and live action. Do you approach them differently? I think they are different and therefore, yeah, there, there's a different approach, but it's still, do you know, here's a bit of music and, you know, maybe in terms of pace and shape, animation changes a lot more, mood shifts a lot quicker. Uh, in, in live action, there can be, um, you know, uh, uh, extended moods that you can kind of hide behind. Here's just a vibe that goes on for two minutes, where in animation, it can be a vibe that goes on for 10 seconds and then changes to something else. So there's there's more, it's more action oriented, I think. I mean, forgetting action, live action, um, then it may be a psychological drama where music is just doing less. Music is doing a lot in, in an animated movie. It's being asked a lot. And then kind of what's the... Like how uh, important is the story itself when you're figuring out the music versus, especially with animation, like the visuals? Because I think it's really interesting when you're talking about like Wade, with Wade, it was colors. But with Emery, you were saying like, oh, we had this kind of resigned feel and almost second nature when she's fixing glass and things like that. I thought it was very interesting that they felt very different just in your approach as well. Yeah, but it's again, it's hard for me to circle back and ask myself why. Um, I, you know, I hope my ears are honest when I listen and look, and and, and if I if they are, you know, and again, this is just me as opposed to me with a director behind me going, you know, no, not that, or that reminds me of this. And I mean, there's there's many instances where a certain color might uh, someone might have a much different reaction to a color than I would, and I have to kind of. Uh, negotiate that, you know, is the director right or wrong, in my opinion, in that assumption? Or is it just so personal that I, I can't defend a choice that I've made if a director doesn't agree? You know, this, this notion of shared experience um, of, of how music hits us and how we react. But it doesn't really answer your, the issue of, 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 of storytelling. I, mean, I think storytelling is probably always essential, that you want to make you want to make a story uh, have as much clarity as it can. Um, and and what can music do? Is it, is it serving action? Is it serving uh, character? Uh, is it serving general mood? W when can it just be moody? When does it have to point towards a bit of action? And in that, I think that that's probably true in, in any movie you'd work on, whether it was animation or live action. Yeah, I the score, I love listening to scores of movies just like in my free time, because I feel like one of the biggest challenges that's always very, very impressive to me is elevating the movie without overtaking it. Yeah, so, perfectly said. Perfectly yeah, said. How do you kind of grapple with that challenge? Because you need the music to be distinct and to really move the story along and get our emotions. But if it overtakes the movie, then it like overpowers everything. And that's so personal. You know, I mean, uh, I don't know if that boils down to like a composer having a certain approach. Um, I mean, I, you know, in, in a, a, a movie of psychology, you'd want to subtextualize. You'd want to say there's more there's more to this character than what you're seeing. And I'm going to do that with, with something that, that plays underneath. That's something that is maybe slightly counter to what you're seeing. Um, yeah, you know, and then, you know, I, I don't know what other examples I could even point to. Uh, but it's, have you ever gone to a movie though where, you know, the, the, the music is so big, it's like in the way of the image. It's like there in front of you and, and the image is, is in front of that. And I, and I think if you're honest and open, it's, it's easy to say that. I mean, I, I don't think I'm a, a composer that wants to be heard, that really wants to come and hit you. That's just not my nature. Sometimes it might serve me more if it was in, in certain environments. Am I, am I too shy in, in my expressive sensibility and I should be more open and like pushing forward? But I think my, my basic aesthetic is one of, of, of more subtlety. And then can you talk a little bit about working with Peter Sohn? Because I know this story is so personal to him. Pete was a great collaborator, very open um, and very, very respectful. But clearly he had he, he was going to have his ideas and those ideas were going to have to be you know fleshed out. Like any, it's no, really no, uh, no different than any director. It, the stakes are too high for a director ever to be too polite to not get what he or she has to get. So there's always going to be that negotiating principle. And, and typically it, it's not fought uh, verbally. I mean, or or debated verbally. It's for me. It's like, okay, you don't like this idea. I get why. Well, what about this idea? 
And um, it's, I think it's much better to speak in, in, in terms of what, what music is doing with an image than in, in talking through uh, why it's not working. I'd rather rewrite an idea than try to convince a director why uh, they were wrong in, in not liking it, you know? Because again, taste is, is, is just so personal. And then was there a favorite character or moment that you kind of got to play with the music in Elemental? Yeah, maybe it was the bubble date, uh, just because it was so beautiful. And, and such a beautiful idea that that he's and, and he had said the Wade had such a beautiful kind of crooked smile on his face, a kind of open, vulnerable. I'm here to protect you, but you are you, and 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 and, and a certain kind of implied pace and, and a kind of piano-y sound and these gorgeous uh, vocalizing that that a player of mine had had processed. Um, that was just a really satisfying uh, moment. And then the Vivisteria opens and. Suddenly that gets more joyous and she's spinning around and, and that was that was fun. That was good fun. I love that moment. And yeah. then are there any unique instruments that you got to use for Elemental that you don't necessarily use a ton? Oh, there's so many instruments. I mean, we we, we tapped into so many colors, uh, you know, ch chatter kind of uh, vocal rhythms. Um, uh, God, I don't know. I mean, they're... Uh, I, sh I should know an answer to this, but there were just so many. It really was like pulling together tons of different sounds from, you know, song bells and toy xylophones to, as I say, you know, vibraphones, um, uh, sitar, uh, octave mandolin, um, processed low brass. I mean, it was just a lot of different things. I loved it. And then were there any unique challenges with Elemental that you don't normally face with other projects? Yeah, this, this notion of an imaginary world. A world that that is parallel to a human world, but utterly, utterly different. And what does that mean in terms of what what how do how do our ears contextualize sounds as it relates to us being people roaming Earth? Uh, how does it relate but not contradict uh, an, an imaginary world? That was that was really challenging. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting because like with the Fire Town and Fireland and stuff, you could kind of hear like it sounded sort of like a specific area and then it would change and you're like oh okay because i like the world building is one of my favorite parts in this and i thought the music did a really good job of helping in, in which in which area uh like the fire town oh okay yeah yeah i mean again you you want to you, you want to imply otherness but you don't want to uh condescend to a notion of otherness and that was that was really um that was a big challenge yeah. And then what do you, do you find most surprising about working on Elemental? Well, maybe maybe in the end, it's this notion that uh, in a movie like Elemental, there's really there's real silliness and lots of puns, but deep, deeply felt things and 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 um, profundity and and kind of going the A to Z to that was was pretty unique. But, you know, I, I think I've said in in, in, uh, in in Pixar movies, you get that a lot, you know, from the very funny to the very deep. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things that I think take wants to take me to a Pixar movie. I was about to ask, because you've worked on a few, like Elemental, Wally, -E, which is my favorite, Finding Nemo. What is it about Pixar that draws you in as a composer? I think they have a real great sense of process and, and, and a way of getting to, to what's most excellent. So I think I really appreciate their work ethic. Uh, and that it's all about story for them, and they're constantly improving. You know, when you when you see a movie in you know May, and then you see the same movie in December, how much it's improved. They just it's always getting better. They they just don't stop, and that that's inspiring. I love that. And this, is there a genre that you haven't had the opportunity to play in that you really want to? Not really. I mean, I you know I I, I don't I, I I guess I don't think that way. I you know if if, if something come comes up and it interests me, I kind of you know, bird in the feather, is that what it is? Or one in the whatever, um, you know, there is something in front of me, an interesting director, let me try to do that, um, as opposed to, you know, waiting for the movie that I've always think I wanted to do. So, and opportunities have been have been plentiful for me. Um, I, you know, I say that knocking wood. Um, so, you know, just take what's next in front of me, typically. No, I love your work. I'm very excited for even more, but like I said, the music in Elemental is just, Fantastic. You did oh, such a great job. <laughs> Thank you so much.